Hi there, uh, this is the third of these very short uh, book reviews. I'm trying to keep under four minutes. Uh, I'm in my office here in Cliff Street. This is a, a wonderful place for me to be in isolation or with the, with the word of God and with the, with the books that I love so much. So this book I wanna draw your attention to again is one that I uh, purchased in 1987, so three years after I was converted. It's one of the Puritan paperbacks published by the Banner of Truth Trust. It's a bit of a hard hitting one. Joseph Alain was trying to, writing in the um, 17th century, was trying to write something to the non-believer to urge them to come to Christ. And so, although um, it's not something we'd necessarily give to a, a friend now, for us to read the clarity with which he understands the urgency of the situation and the need to communicate the gospel is, uh, is excellent. And there's some wonderful quotes, for example, the unconverted man is like a choice instrument that has every string broken or out of tune. God is trying to play a tune through you. And while unconverted, every string is broken or out of tune. It's impossible, no matter how skillful the player, to make it play the right tune or a good tune or a pleasing tune, one that's pleasing to God. Um, and then in terms of the necessity of conversion, there's lots on that. While unconverted, none of your sins are blotted out. They are all upon record against you. And it's actually quite edifying to read the frankness with which he paints the picture of us before we were converted and the present condition of those who don't know Christ. In talking about um, the eternal condition, of those who don't know Christ. He says this, I wouldn't trouble you nor torment you before the time with the thoughts of your eternal misery, except in order that you may make your escape. So even in our talking about the judgment to come, the reality of God's judgment, it's actually not something that anyone with any humanity would relish. It's simply that this is the reality and it is a mercy to hear of a warning that there's, you know, the no trespass because there's a danger beyond the sign. That's a mercy to hear it. Same with the, the issue of eternal salvation. And in terms of need to apply the gospel, what shall I say? He says, would it not grieve a person of any humanity if in the time of a raging plague, he should have a remedy that would infallibly cure all the country and recover the most hopeless patients? And yet his friends and neighbors should die by the hundreds around him because they would not use it. Or we might say because we would not give it also. The gospel is that which can really cure the soul and reconcile people to God. Forgiveness of sins is available. We need to share this good news. And then finally on urging a decision, he writes right near the end of the book. He's saying, okay, you choose. Set the world with all its glory and paint and gallantry, with all its pleasures and promotions on the one hand, and set God with all his infinite excellences and perfections on the other, and see that you do deliberately make your choice. Wow. So I found this a uh, challenging, but ultimately, edifying book very short book actually only 140 150 pages or so um, but very strengthening to my own soul and also to help me get clarity on the urgency of the gospel message and why we need to share it generously liberally and wisely with those around us god bless my time is up see you next time